So as we come to the end of another financial year, obviously uh, it's a busy time for superannuation uh, and Chart West is no different. So Mano and the team have been busy crunching the numbers. Mano, how did super funds perform in the uh, last financial year? The median return for our growth fund category, which is where most Australians have their superannuation invested, was 9.4%, with a number of funds delivering returns in the double digits, including Host Plus, who finished number one for the second year in a row with a return of 12.5%. It's also worth noting that even the worst performing fund in that category returned a respectable 6.5%. So that sounds like a great result. Should members be happy with these returns? Members should be delighted with a return of 9.4%. It's comfortably ahead of the typical long-term return objective, which is to beat inflation by 3.5%. And that translates to about 55 to 6%. Additionally, the 9.4% was achieved on the back of eight straight positive years where the average return was 9%. And that great run means that on a cumulative basis, growth funds have returned 135% since markets bottomed out at the height of the GFC. So with such strong numbers, what's been driving performance this year? For starters, every asset class was in positive territory for the year, and the better performing funds were those that had a higher allocation to listed shares and unlisted assets such as unlisted infrastructure, private equity and unlisted property. Having a lower allocation to traditional bonds and cash would have also helped greatly because they were the worst performing asset classes. So that sounds like some fantastic results for this financial year. Uh, now, super is, of course, a long-term investment. How have these funds performed over the longer term? We have numbers going back to the start of compulsory super, uh, which is 1 July 1992. And over that 26-year period, the median growth fund has returned 8.3% per annum, which is 2.3% per annum ahead of the typical return objective. Additionally, over that 26-year period, we've only had three negative returns. So not only have the return objectives been met, but the risk objective has also been met comfortably, and funds should be extremely proud of that. Now, you mentioned growth funds, which is where most Australians have their superannuation. How have the other categories done? We're pleased to be able to say that every risk category, right from our lowest risk conservative category to our highest risk all growth category, have achieved their return objectives over 1, 3, 5, 7, 10 and 15 years to June 2018. Sounds like some pretty good numbers across the board. So can we expect this kind of performance to continue into the future? The returns we've seen over the last few years isn't sustainable. Given the run we've had, most asset classes are fully valued or are close to, so members can expect more modest returns going forward.